Welcome back. In the previous session, we have discussed about the double helix model of DNA, which is the genetic material, and also we have discussed about how this long DNA molecule is packed into a small area in the form of chromosomes within the nucleus. Now, for the successful transfer of information from the parent cell to the daughter cell, DNA replication is a very important event. Whatever information is present within the parent cell, if it has to be passed on to the new daughter cell, equal amount of DNA has to be transferred from the parent to the daughter. So, a precursor for this event is the DNA duplication. As you have studied in class 11, during cell cycle, we have the mitotic phase, which is the phase where the cell actually divides and produces two cells and we have the interface this is the time between two cell divisions and it is in the interface we have G1 S and G2 phases in the G1 and G2 phases all the proteins and cell organelles will divide and duplicate whereas in the S phase which is the synthesis phase this is where the DNA will double itself that is if originally DNA is represented by 2C then after DNA duplication or doubling it becomes 4C so the amount of DNA will double that is DNA replication it is a biological process through which a parent DNA produces a daughter DNA replica exact copy is produced so that is what we will be discussing how exactly does a single double standard DNA produce another DNA molecule containing the exact same information so once the double helix model of DNA was proposed by James Watson and Francis Crick, they also made an important observation saying that due to the complementary base pairing nature of the DNA molecule, this complementary base pairing can be used to explain how information is passed from parent to the offspring. In 19 58 two scientists Matthew Meselson and Franklin Stoll experimentally they showed the nature of DNA replication this experiment is famously called as the Meselson Stoll experiment. The conclusion of this experiment was that DNA replication is semi-conservative in nature. What do you mean by semi-conservative nature of DNA replication? It simply means that we have a parent strand of DNA it is double stranded with a polarity that is anti parallel. Now, during DNA replication, the two strands will separate, and these two strands will act as template strands or the parent DNA strand. To this template strand, new nucleotides are added, the bases are added and thus a 
new daughter strand is produced. So one strand of DNA will produce two strands of DNA. If you observe these two strands of DNA, which is newly produced, each strand contains half of the parent strand, and one of the strand is newly synthesized, whereas one of the DNA strand belongs to the parent. That is what is called as semi-conservative nature of DNA. That to prove this point that DNA replication is semi-conservative in nature, Messelson and Stahl they grew E. coli cells in petri plates. So bacterial cell was used for this experiment. E. coli, you know, it has a doubling time of approximately 18 to 20 minutes. That is, every 18 to 20 minutes, one bacterial cell will divide. So, before cell divides, we have the process of DNA replication. So, using the E. coli cells, this semi-conservative nature of replication was studied. How did they do this? So, E. coli cells were first they were grown on a medium that had that contained heavy isotope of nitrogen. So this was given in the form of ammonium chloride. This heavy isotope was N15. Remember, the normal nitrogen is N14. So, the nutrient medium contained ammonium chloride wherein the nitrogen was a heavier atom that is N15. So, whatever nitrogen is required by the E. coli cells or the DNA has to come from this source alone. So this heavy isotope of nitrogen acts as the nitrogenous source. Once this E. coli bacteria were grown for a long period of time on this heavy isotope containing nitrogen, then these bacteria were then shifted to a medium containing or normal nitrogen that is N14 and after 20 minutes the results were analyzed the results were analyzed using density gradient centrifugation. So, density gradient centrifugation is a technique wherein you know at high speed samples are centrifuged and the substances will separate themselves based on their mass. The particles which have a lower mass or lower density will be present on the upper layer and those particles that have a heavier density will of course be settled at the bottom at the lower layer. So if you have to visualize this, let us take two centrifuge tubes, tube number one and tube number two. Once in the first case, the E. coli bacteria that were grown on heavy isotope of nitrogen, they were spun using a cesium chloride gradient. So the liquid that we are using or solution that we are using for this centrifugation is cesium chloride and when it is, when these cells DNA is centrifuged, it will form a 
layer. So this is for our nitrogen that is heavy N15. The bacteria that are grown on the normal nitrogen medium when centrifuged, being lighter, they will form a layer slightly higher. So this is the normal DNA layer, whereas this is the heavy isotope layer using density gradient centrifugation. Once these bacteria were shifted into a medium containing normal nitrogen, it was allowed to grow for another 20 minutes. We know that after 20 minutes, the cells will divide, which means DNA replication has taken place. After being shifted, this samples were analyzed using density gradient centrifugation. DNA that was analyzed after being transferred from heavy medium to light medium, it formed a layer between that of the heavy isotope and the light isotope. So, somewhere it forms in between. So, this is because this DNA they contain one strand of N15 and one strand of N14 that is they have hybrid DNA. Very simple to understand this. So, the E. coli that are, that are being grown on this petri plate, their DNA and nitrogenous bases all will contain heavy isotope of nitrogen. Now, when this DNA is shifted into the normal nitrogen containing medium, during DNA replication, we know the strands will separate. So, that is N15 and N15. Now, the new nucleotides that are being added, they contain the normal nitrogen because that is the only source of nitrogen available. So, you get two daughter molecules of which one strand contains the heavy isotope and another strand contains the normal N14. So, it will have a density in between that of the N15 and the N14 between the two layers. This goes on to show that DNA replication is semi-conservative in nature. The newly formed daughter molecule will contain one strand of the parent and one newly synthesized strand. If this experiment is allowed to continue for another 20 minutes and check the sample after 40 minutes, what we find is we have two DNA strands, one containing N15 and N14, N15 and N14. When these undergo replication, you get two daughter strands. So, wherein in this generation, you find a new daughter strand that has only the normal nitrogen. Similarly, even in this case, one daughter molecule will have N15 and N14 and another will have N14. So, the ratio of daughter DNA which contains new nitrogen and which contains hybrid nitrogen will be that is 1 is to 1. So, the amount of new strands formed using the normal nitrogen will be more. So, this goes on to show that the newly formed daughter strand contains one from the parent and one from the daughter that is one from the parent and one from the daughter. Thus, Messerson and Stoll showed that DNA replication is semi-conservative in nature. How are new 
stands synthesized from a parent strand we know that dna replication it takes place during the s phase or the synthetic phase of the interface for dna replication to take place we require a few important things number 1 we need a template strand this is nothing but the parent strand so template strand will be used as a original strand based on which a new is new strand will be synthesized so template strand is also sometimes called as the parent strand that is the dna strand along with the template strand we need enzymes and different proteins most importantly the enzyme dna polymerase so the dna polymerase is the enzyme which will help in adding new nucleotides to the template strand and forming a new strand about which we will study later so dna polymerase is the main main enzyme for replication in prokaryotes and in eukaryotes different types of polymerases carry out different functions for example in prokaryotes dna polymerase is the main replicative enzyme whereas in eukaryotes we have dna polymerase alpha the main polymerase enzyme that is used for synthesizing a new dna along with the dna polymerase we require dntps that is deoxy nucleoside triphosphates these are your adenosine triphosphate guanosine triphosphate cytidine triphosphate and thymidine triphosphates the deoxy ribonucleotides they have two functions one they provide the nitrogenous base for the formation of a new strand not only that these contain three phosphate groups attached to it like in atp adenosine triphosphate which is a energy currency of the cell the dntps also provide energy for this complementary base pairing reaction so when a new nucleotide is added to the dna template strand the energy required for this binding is also provided by this by the dntps and magnesium ions play a important role in dna replication and further other than this we require the enzyme helicase we know that the dna is a double helix for the formation of template strand this helix should be opened up so for this purpose we have the enzyme dna helicase which will help in breaking the hydrogen bonds between the two strands so when the hydrogen bonds are broken the two strands are now separated and they open up so helicase enzyme is required and we also have certain type of proteins called as single strand binding proteins ssbs these proteins will bind to the already opened dna strand so when the double stranded dna is opened up by the helicase we find single strands that are free and we know that the strands are complementary to each other and they all have all the capacity to once again rejoin so to prevent the rejoining of the separated dna strands single strand binding proteins are useful and we need an enzyme primase the primase enzyme the dna primase enzyme it is useful for making 
a rna primer so this is because if nucleotides are to be added as complementary base pairs to the template strand there should be a free 3 prime oh group we have already studied that new nucleotides can be joined to the 3 prime oh group so this rna primer it will provide the free 3 prime oh group for joining or for addition of new nucleotides so the new nucleotides will be added to the 3 prime oh group of the rna primer once the polymerization reaction that is the adding of nucleotides are complete this rna primer should be removed from there so for which we have a rnas so the rnas will remove the rna primer from there and finally we have the ligase enzyme so when the rna primer is joint there will be certain small gaps between the dna so the ligase enzyme will help in joining the 3 prime oh group and 5 prime phosphate group using the ester bond so by forming the ester bond the gaps in the newly synthesized dna can be filled so these are the different biological molecules that play an important role in the formation of a new DNA strand from a parent strand. Let us look at this in detail. Very important question is where does the DNA replication start? For example, in the case of prokaryotes, there is a single chromosome and this DNA you know is present in the nucleoid region so the DNA is circular in nature whereas in the case of eukaryotes there are many chromosomes and all these chromosomes need to be completely copied before the cell division takes place so the enzymes required for these reactions are also different between a prokaryote and a eukaryote in the case of prokaryotes the dna polymerase is able of adding around 2000 base pairs per second whereas in eukaryotes this rate is slightly slower at around 1000 base bases per second so that is number one the second important difference between a prokaryotic replication and eukaryotic replication is the point from where DNA replication begins. So that point is called as the origin of replication. In prokaryotes we call it as ori C origin of replication C whereas in eukaryotes we simply call it as origin of replication so prokaryotes have only one origin of replication from where DNA replication starts whereas eukaryotes have multiple origin of replications that is the DNA is being copied at multiple locations in a chromosome or in a chromatin fiber whereas in prokaryotes that is in E. coli bacteria replication takes starts from one place only let us begin from here so we have a double stranded DNA and the DNA replication it begins at the origin of replication so let us say this is the place from where DNA replication is supposed to start and we know that the DNA strands are anti-parallel in nature so that is and all the hydrogen bonds are intact so the first step in DNA replication is that the double strands should be separated 
for which to happen these hydrogen bonds need to be broken so that is where our helicase enzyme plays an important role the helicase enzyme it plays an important role in removing the hydrogen bonds so when the hydrogen bonds are removed the two strands are now separated so that is the function of the helicase enzyme so the helicase enzyme it will break the hydrogen bonds and the strands are separated and once the two strands are separated we get what is called as a replication fork a fork like structure is produced so it is in the replication fork all the action that takes place so in this replication fork our polymerization reaction will then continue so this will have the free bases that are attached and the movement of the fork is in this direction so the fork will keep on opening in this direction so this is the direction of the fork so that is the first enzyme dna helicase which will help in separating the two strands and as i already told you these two strands bases are complementary to each other so there is all the chance that these two will once again rejoin or reanneal so the single stranded binding proteins these are proteins which will come and bind to the separated strands so these proteins will not allow the rejoining of the already separated strands that is a function of single strand binding proteins we have the template strand that is ready so both of the strands can act as template upon which new strand can be synthesized so both of these are the template strands next one this is done we have the enzyme dna primase this dna primase it will add a rna primer at the 3 prime end so a rna primer is added by the primase and it will have a free 3 prime group so to this free 3 prime group new nucleotides can be added so this is the rna primer that is synthesized by the dna primase enzyme so once the rna primer is added and if 3 prime oh group is freely available now the appropriate dntps can be added based on complementary base pairing for example if the base here is a let us say c c g t t a c so according to complementary base pairing in the place of adenine complementary base pair will be thymine so a deoxy thymidine triphosphate base will be brought together and this will then be added to this free 3 prime group so a p is added to the triphosphate so and hydrogen bond is produced the energy required for this binding is provided by the deoxy nucleotide triphosphate itself so both the base as well as the energy is provided by this so a base is added similarly new bases will keep on adding so this function of addition of new bases is what is done by the polymerase this is the enzyme which will polymerize the entire chain it will add the right type of dntp based on the complementary base pairing so the 
property of the DNA polymerase enzyme is that it will always move from 3, 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So the movement of DNA polymerase is in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. That means the DNA polymerase enzyme is moving in this direction and as such the newly synthesized strand in this particular case is also from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Therefore, this strand is called as the leading strand. So, the template strand which has the orientation 3 prime to 5 prime will act as the leading strand. This is called as the leading strand because the direction of movement of the replication four as well as the direction of movement of DNA polymerase are all in the same direction. DNA polymerase is also moving from 5 prime to 3 prime direction as well as the new synthesized strand is also moving in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. That's why it's called as a leading strand. The addition of nucleotides in the leading strand it is continuous in nature. The strand that is being formed on the template 3 prime 5 prime is being continuously synthesized. On the other hand the opposite strand which has the polarity 5 prime to 3 prime so the newly synthesized strand should be anti parallel that is in the direction 3 prime to 5 prime but we know that dna polymerase is always moving in 5 prime to 3 prime direction meaning a special separate dna polymerase is required for the synthesizing of this particular strand. So, in the opposite strand, the DNA polymerase is moving in this direction that is in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. This strand is called as the lagging strand. In the 3 prime to 5 prime template, it is called leading strand and the addition of nucleotides is continuous. Whereas in the strand with 5 prime to 3 prime polarity, the DNA polymerase is moving in the direction opposite of the replication fork. The replication fork is moving in this direction. Whereas on the strand 5 prime to 3 prime, the DNA polymerase will move in opposite direction. This strand is called as the lagging strand. And what happens in the lagging strand is that in the lagging strand many RNA primers are added and DNA is synthesized in short fragments. So this kind of synthesis is called as discontinuous synthesis. So on the lagging strand we find that there are DNA fragments are formed at short intervals and each fragment is around 150 to 200 nucleotides, 200 base pairs in length. So short segments are formed on the lagging strand hence we call as the strand is discontinuous. These repeating short fragments are called as the Okazaki fragments. Many such Okazaki fragments are formed on the lagging strand. And this replication four will then keep on moving. The DNA is unwound and we know that in eukaryotes replication is taking place in multiple locations. So from this location DNA is copied till here and at the same time from here another DNA is being copied. So that is how the entire genome can be copied. If there is only one origin of replication and you can imagine the time taken 
to completely duplicate a human genome which is 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power 9 base pairs so the advantage is that there are multiple origin of replications in eukaryotes so replication is taking place at multiple locations and all once it is completely done what happens once it is completely done then the RNA's enzyme will remove these primers the RNA's enzyme will remove the primers from here also there is only one so this primer is removed and the DNA polymerase itself will add the new nucleotide in this particular location so that is done and we see that there will be certain gaps that are left between the fragments and between the strands so these gaps will be filled by the DNA ligase enzyme the DNA ligase enzyme will come and join the strands and what we see is that from one template strand ultimately when copying is completed we get two daughter strands so the DNA replication is complete which takes place in the synthetic phase of the interface so that is all about the DNA replication and the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic replication to quickly summarize first the helicase enzyme will come and break the hydrogen bonds between the double strand the double strand DNA will open and produce a replication fork the replication fork will continue to move in a direction and helicase enzyme will keep on moving in this direction and the fork is getting opened at the origin of replication next a RNA primer is added with the help of DNA primase enzyme it will provide a free 3 per NOH group for the addition of new nucleotides using the enzyme DNA polymerase new nucleotides are added energies also provided by the nucleoside triphosphate this nucleotides will be added to the RNA primer and based on complementary base pairing the new strand is formed once the DNA is completely copied the enzyme RNAs will remove this RNA primer and ligase will help in joining the two joining any gaps present between the DNA there are two strands that are seen during the replication process the leading strand and the lagging strand in the leading strand synthesis of the new strand is continuous whereas in the lagging strand we can see many short fragments 152 to 2 base pairs in 200 base pairs in length called as the Okazaki fragment this is called as the lagging strand this is because in the, on the lagging strand the movement of the polymerase enzyme is opposite in direction to the movement of the replication fork so that is all about DNA replication thank you